Hi. So, marginal gains is about improving several areas of practice and performance by a small amount so that you can see a big improvement in your overall results. And it's particularly important in tennis because tennis matches are often very close and decided by only a handful of points and the margin of victory is often very small. So I'm going to give you 10 marginal gains for tennis over the next two videos. We're going to start today with four that involve what you're doing off the court and in practice. And then we're going to move on to six that will cover what happens on match day and what happens during those matches. There's often a very big difference between how people are on the tennis court when they're playing tennis matches compared to how they are when they're off the court in normal life. So it's important to understand who you are and how you behave when you're competing in tennis matches and to use that clarity to be able to really push yourself to get the most out of yourself. So who are you on the tennis court? Are you that determined grinder who chases everything down and makes every ball, never gives up? Or are you all about the trick shots and just having fun on the court, really just pure enjoyment? Um, or are you the confident type who walks tall in between points and uh, never doubts yourself? Or are you the loud, pumped up type who likes to celebrate every single important and exciting point that you win? Or are you poker faced? Maybe you're just ice cool in all situations during matches. Or are you the grumpy negative type who gets angry in matches and gets down on themselves all too easily? Now, we do see quite a few people fall into that category. Even on the pro tour, we see people like Dan Evans and Andy Murray. Uh, you often see those guys getting down on themselves, getting grumpy, shouting at their team and their coaches and uh, berating themselves when they, they miss a shot that they feel they should have made. And of course, who knows whether they need that to fire them up to perform um, and maybe they wouldn't be as good as they are without it, but perhaps they could have achieved even more in their careers if they had managed to uh, get rid of that negative persona on the match court. Uh, but we'll never really know the answer. If you do fall into that grumpy negative category, then it's really about trying to ask yourself um, if, if that is going to allow you to fulfil your potential in tennis and perhaps more importantly, is it going to allow you to enjoy the sport the way that uh, it should be enjoyed, that you might want to enjoy it. So ultimately, have a think about uh, asking yourself who you are on the court and whether that fits in with who you want to be on the court. And then you can use that clarity uh, to grab yourself a nice little marginal gain by consistently embracing your on-court persona every time you compete in a match. And then that, in time, will allow you to build confidence in your ability to perform in match situations and under pressure. What is most responsible for winning you points in tennis matches? Could it be a huge serve, or maybe your deadly drop shots, or a massive forehand, or maybe an insane backhand, or crazily good net skills? Or it might be something else, it might be something different, it might be your incredible movement and speed around the court, or your unbreakable mental strength or just your never give up attitude on the court. Understand what it is that is most responsible for winning you your points in tennis matches. Make sure it fits in with your on-court personality too, and then you can grab an important marginal gain, and you can use that clarity to further develop whatever your tennis superpower skill is. And with that, you can then increase your confidence in using it on the match court, and hopefully using it in the biggest moments in matches where it really counts and will help you to get more wins on the board. Now you can use your understanding from the last marginal gain to make your practice more clever, more purposeful, more specific to what you're going to do on the match court. So you can develop a drill where you, you practice your superpower specifically in a match situation and that will allow you to develop that skill even more to make it more reliable on the match court. Let's say that your skill is running around all day after all the balls and you might set up a drill with your practice partner where you have to have a 20 shot quality rally before the point goes live to really push yourself. Uh, if it's about your net skills then you might ask a practice partner to feed in appropriate approach shots for you and then you play the point out from there to practice that. Or maybe it's about aggressive returning in which case you ask your practice partner to serve at you and maybe challenge yourself to win the point within two shots to try and develop that superpower of aggressive returning. No matter what the superpower skill is you want to practice, you'll be able to find a specific way to practice it that directly relates to how you're going to use it on the match court. And that is the key to purposeful practice and making your practice more clever. 
And of course, once you've practiced your superpower skills, then you can switch places with your practice partner and help them to practice theirs. You will then be in a different match situation that you might well have to face on, on, on the match court at times, and so it's still beneficial practice for you. And of course, if there's a weakness in your game that you particularly want to practice, then you can work on that in the same purposeful, specific way. Right, imagine you've got a friend, he comes up to you and he tells you he's got a really important geography exam next week and he knows that half the exam is going to be on rivers. And so he tells you his strategy for preparing for that exam is going to be not to do any revision on rivers at all, but just to focus all his revision on other geography stuff. Now, what would you make of that? If you had to come up with two words to describe your friend and this decision on how to prepare for this exam, what would they be? God, you can say it, you can say it out loud, I mean, no one can hear you on the internet, it's fine, you know, just two words to describe that. Right, it might be a little bit boring, but the fact is, if you don't spend a lot of time practicing your serve and return, then you need to turn those two words that you just had for your exam friend right back on yourself. Because every single point in tennis starts with either a serve or a return. And if you're serving, you might well be having more than one go at your serve on just one point. And you can find that perhaps in certain matches and situations, up to 50% of every shot, all the shots you will play in a match will be serves and returns. Oh, and I want to mention underarm serving for those of you who like to use that from time to time. I'm all for it, by the way, as long as the intention is tactical. The truth is, the standard of underarm serves from the pro tour down to club level is simply appalling. So if you like to use your underarm serves from time to time, then for goodness sake, go and practice them and then you might actually get good at them. So grab yourself a huge marginal gain by practicing your serve and return a lot more regularly and with purpose, right? On your serve, you can be looking to practice your consistency, your placement, and if you've got a practice partner down the other end, then practice your, the timing of your first split step too. And you can do those three things with your powerful flat serve, your topspin serve, the kick, and also your slice serve. And when returning, again, you can practice placement, consistency, you can practice your movement after the return to get in position for the next shot. And you can do that with normal return position. You can do that with a deeper return position where you want to give yourself a bit more time to play your return. And obviously you can do that with a more aggressive return position where you're trying to take time away from your opponent by taking the ball really early. And you can expand this practice, make it a bit more exciting by playing the first four shots of the point out. So then you can really focus on what you're doing in the first two shots of the point. Um, and you'll actually find that uh, surprising the amount of time that, that uh, your rallies don't go beyond four shots anyway. So if you get really good at starting the points really well, then your results are only going to improve. Right, that is it for this first video on marginal gains. Remember, if you want the full marginal gains and tennis experience, then do head to tennisplayer.net where my 11-part series on marginal gains and tennis is published, and you can check it all out there. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next marginal gains video.